Bang on the fly championship level of eight star. Boxing Weekly. 50 50 record. Four fights, two wins, two defeats. But look at that. The two fights that he's won have both been inside the distance. One pound weight advantage for Beard tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is a flyweight contest with a match made at extra two pounds over six two-minute rounds. Introducing first in the blue corner with the white, red and blue striped shorts from Newcastle, Neil Johnson. <laughs> and his opponent in the red corner with the blue and gold shorts from Dagenham, Ricky Mears. Ricky Beard, eight stone, one pound. Your referee for this contest is again Marcus McDonald and your timekeeper, Danny Peacock. Beard, Johnson. Oh, I tell you, Ricky Beard is enormously tall for a flyweight. Very tall indeed. He's huge. Is it... Davy McCauley is five feet seven. This game must be five feet eight. Well, I was going to say, coming from your part of the world, you've got all that flyweights, but I don't ever think I've seen one quite, quite, quite this tall. He's tall indeed. So, Neil Johnson in the white, making his pro debut, another boy. Great! Let me say that, bit. Take your arms out, Johnson. He can either be an advantage or a disadvantage. He looks quite sharp and fast. Nice sharp puncher, too. What's your age? What's your age in there, boys? Pull your arms out. Pull your arms out. Good job. Just get out on your own. You don't need me. Just get out on your own. Pull your arms out. Chance early in the fight. Hey. Johnson's a good... Hey. Hey. He's he's face. Face. He's he's already. Hey. Johnson's face is quite red. And those few sharp punches at the beginning of the round. Well, Beard's lost his, his last two fights on points, but the two he's won, as I said, as he was getting in the ring, the two he's won, he's won inside the distance so he can hit. And all you've got to do is look at Johnson's nose to realise that. And his head is getting jolted back by that left jab. He's a stinging punch, isn't he? Close the well, I guess this is the way to fight a boy having his pro debut. You just pressure him. Don't let him settle. One thing I was always told when I was a kid, I'll never forget it. A fella called Sweeney told me down in Dublin, he said, as soon as that right, bell rings, back. son, he said, run you across the ring and hit the guy with the hardest punch you can. Put the fear of God into him. And uh, that's what that's what Beard has done to Johnson. He's hurt him and frightened him. And uh, he's having a good left hook there again. That's good advice. Quite a sharp right. puncher. What's your rates? What's your rates? <laughs> Good opening round. And no doubt at all, well, no doubt at all in my mind, but anyway, that, that went to Ricky Beard. There's a good, good sharp hitter. Um, I'm wondering about these two defeats that he has. Is, he, is it a case of that he throws everything he's got in the first few rounds, and if he, if he can't knock the guy out, he blows out himself? But uh, what he's shown so far is a very nasty left and right hand. He's a good puncher. He can punch short and long, and uh, he's lively. He's, he's narrow shoulder. Watch the way he pulls those shoulders up around the chin to protect himself for any counter punches. He's got a distinct advantage of having the height over all of his opponents. I don't think I've ever seen a flyweight quite so tall. Uh, another surprise packet out of the Brendan Ingle stable. He does produce some canny boxers, doesn't he? Yeah. Round this is not the typical Brendan Ingle mold, I would say. 
This guy's aggressive, he's done in most produced boxes. So to the second, with Neil Johnson on the right. A little bit of leeway to make up. Blood started trickling down on uh, Johnson's nose again. Seems to be wider than that, that jab appeared just spearing through his guard. <laughs> Trying to do some quite useful work inside though with Johnson. Right! Stay right there. Move your arms up, Johnson. He's throwing that right hand over the top and he's not watching that Johnson's actually dropping. All he's got to do is punch for his chest instead of punching for his head and he'd hit something. If you're punching a move, moving target, if the guy's good at moving his head, you're always told to punch for his chest. You hit something, whereas if you, if you punch for his head, you nearly always miss. Johnson came back there with a couple of good body shots. He's now starting to work on, on Baird's body. Which is exactly what he's got to do. He's got to get inside. And on the way in, he's got to start throwing those body punches to, to hit Baird and wear him down. That's it. That's the sort of punch he's got to throw. Try to keep, the, keep the fight at short distance because you can nullify a guy's power by cutting down his leverage. Stay close to him. It's going to be a good little fight. Rolling on, Johnson. Rolling. Half a lot closer. We saw Ricky Beard last time we were with your call in Bethel Green. We fought the Welsh boy, Eric George, in Georgia. Beat him on points over six rounds. And George, a little guy, I mean, typical flyweight stature, if you like, and he, he wound him, wore him down over the six. With Beard, now with Johnson. If you watch him on the inside, he's not good on the inside. Johnson, when he's going, when he's going in like that, that's the sort of punch to the body. Watch the way he's doubling bared over with those body shots. That's what he's got to do. He's got to slip inside those long punches and bang them around the rib cage, like that. Keep the fight at short distance. <laughs> Just, it'll be interesting to see, has Johnson learned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round three. At a purpose about Neil Johnson now as he comes out for this third round. The opening was sticky for him and he got caught and he got hurt, but He's getting nice his body together now. He's using that left hand a great effect. Hooking and jabbing. And he's doing it well. Tuck up and keep his hands tight on the way in. Make sure his chin is guarded. And then let those body punches go. Well, you've got a good idea there, don't you, of the distant difference in the height between these two boys. They were in close. But he's so much more mobile than this, Johnson. Come on, Boxing, come on, time out. Watch your head, beard. Watch the head. Box on. Well, you heard that. Have a bad cut now on it was Johnson's left eye. Referee warned him too late. Johnson's cut. It looks like it's below the eye, which isn't too bad, but he's cut. He looks a sorry sight now. He's got blood coming from the nose. The left eye too. And, well, you heard Marcus McDonald's warning for heads. Our prize is for getting how that cut was caused. He's getting really into the fight, Johnson. He's punching to the body. He's boxing extremely well. Watch his movement now. He's slipping around, avoiding Bird's punches and then working to the body. It's right, nice left hook. If you watch the birds complaining to the referee, he's actually complaining because Johnson's hurting him. Not because he's punching him. Those are legitimate punches, but he's hurting him. He's coming really back into the fight. His lace is open. The referee's going to have to stop the fight and take his hands up. That could be a very useful breather. Marcus well, he's coming to the end of the round. He's, he's actually going to stop it. That's right. Yeah. That's a useful little, little breather. Now, Freddie King 
will not be allowed to work on the eye. No, he's cut above the eye, unfortunately. So that, it looks a nasty he cut. Doing again. <laughs> no, I didn't see what actually caused it. Did you, Dave? It was the clash of heads. As he said, the warning came too just late. a fraction of a second too late. Mm. What a shame. What a thing to happen on your pro debut. That was turning into a, a really good fight. I don't know how much longer it's going to last. Josh was really looks, coming into it. He looks as though he's got a dig on him. <laughs> and of course, Grid will be going for that eye now. And the Johnson corner has got a little work to do. This time, Brendan Ingalls in the lucky corner. Um, again, they're going to have to put that adrenaline and work on the eye. The problem is there, they've only allowed, they're only allowed to use one in a thousand adrenaline. Um, and it, they only have 60 seconds to stop that blood. Freddie King won't even be telling this guy anything. He'll just be concentrating on stopping the flow of blood. Johnson knows what he's got to do. And he won't even say a thing to him. He's just trying to stop that blood, stem the flow, and give him another chance of a few more rounds. And you get a good, good idea of some, of some good cool corner work in the blue corner. Not this corner, not the Brendan Ingle corner. We've got, we've got uh, Freddie King working on the cut, the glove getting taped up. Now, yeah, yeah. that cut was caused. Round four. Well, inconclusive, that's how it could have happened. Round four. Johnson in the white, Beard in the blue. Schedule for six. And the corners here have done a pretty useful right. job on that left eye. Bird's been told to keep out of the way. Just keep stabbing at that cut. Keep out of the way and not come forward. Keep picking and allow Johnson to come at you and try to connect us on the punches. Thing is, Bird is a very stiff puncher for a flyweight. He's hurt Johnson again. Yeah, if Johnson wants, if Johnson can't keep out of trouble, he can't just stand off and jab because he this hasn't got the, the reach. Yeah. See, he's, he's got to fight this guy. It's a, it's a vicious circle. He's got to come forward to fight Bird. He's liable to get tagged on the way in. That's right. And uh, he's got this nasty cut, so he's really up against it. And you can see that that cut really has revitalised Bird. He was uh, looking. A little, little bit, a little bit tired the last round, but uh, he's, he's got enthusiastic now. He's got his confidence back. Freddie King has done an excellent job in that cut. It hasn't opened again. And uh, it's looking great. There's no, there's, no, there's no blood there at all, so, which is amazing. There's been quite a few punches exchanged, and uh, he's hurting with those bodies. Johnson's come back really well. Look at those left hooks of the body. He's really doing a masterful job. He's hurting bad. He certainly is. It's a much better round for Johnson. He's, uh, he's thinking now. And he hasn't allowed the cut to perturb his style of fight. It's really good. And he's really winging in these body shots. And they've got to be taking the toe. There's no question they are. One good body punches are, are better than ten head punches, I can tell you that, because I was I always perfected my body punches for that simple reason. I remember, I remember. And of course the body punches go in, the guard comes down. And he switched to the head, and, uh, well, he had started the round well. He fell away, and I reckon Johnson might have nicked that round. What do you reckon, Baron? Yeah, I think so. I have to agree with you there. And uh, if you look at Baird's face on the way back to the corner, there was a grimace on his face. Those body punches are beginning to take their toll. Well, that's the, that's the downside of being a very tall flyweight. You've got the reach, but you're built very fragile, and... Uh, the law of average is if you're tall shots. enough, your, your, your guts have got to be tall, your body's got to be tall, your abdominal area's got to be long as well. So here's, here's some great punches. Bird landing a good right there, coming back in to try and hit Johnson, who finished the round very strongly. Well, Freddie King really has done a wonderful job on that cut. Brendan Ingle. Oh, if anybody can motivate him, he can. Number three, one for Marcus McDonald to score this. Early exchanges were unquestionably beards, as uh, Johnson, in his first pro fight, struggled a little bit to find his rhythm. Beard looks ahead at this stage. 
But uh, Johnson in the last round was coming back into it. And it always looks good when the, the fighter finish around strongly. I'm telling you, those body punches are hurting Barry. He's a dangerous puncher. Those body punches are starting to take effect. Johnson's just, just got to keep it up. And he can take over at the moment he's behind. Just indicators of Johnson, just watch the low punches. You just see Baird smile there. <laughs> <laughs> That's an indication that he's hurt. Too. It's a big giveaway. He's a dangerous puncher for a flyer. I can't, I can't believe he hit so hard for being so tall and slim. But he certainly does that. There's a little marking, little swelling under. Johnson's right eye now. And I hope this is, isn't going to be a problem for him in his pro career, because if he, if he marks up easy, he's going to find the going tough. Who is... Uh, he's trying very hard. He's attacking future. the body again. Good body puncher. Little graze under that right eye. And the left left eye, the one that was cut on the third, just... No, it's the third that's cut now. He's cut above the left eye. It is true. Well, Boy, it's all, happening. it's all happening in this one. It's all happening in this one. Well, here we go again. Blood's really flowing out of that cut. That's a nasty one. So both boys cut now. Both on the left eye. Johnson in the third. Beard in the fifth. Johnson, a little graze under the right eye. Some nice body punches again from Johnson. Look at those left hooks. That's very good. Really good punch into the body. And he stopped a nice left hook then on the way out. That's that right hand. Oh, an awful, uh, no, an awful the, clash of heads there. The Did you cut, see that? Yeah, the cut had already been well, caused. It's actually um, happened before that clash of but, heads. Um, a lot of bumping and boring going on there. Not for the faint out of this one. Both boys cut one round to go, probably just as well as any one round to go. And... Brendan Ingall hasn't been able to stop it. Now, I thought I did see just a little trace of the cut reopening on Johnson's left eye in the last round. We shall see. Johnson in the white, Beard in the blue. This is the last. And it can go either way. Well, it's really been hurt with those left hooks to the body. He's not worried about the cut. All he's worried about is protecting the... Referee's going to have a look at this cut. No, 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 the laser's come undone. The cut was never really closed. There you can see it. So. That's going to come down to determination and to guts now. Who wants to win this fight? Oh, a good right hand for Beard. That was right on the button. A nice left hook to the body. What's the way Beard is doubling over to stop those left hooks coming in? He's actually bending right down. It's a tremendous finish to a very exciting flyweight fight. Well, you wonder how Marcus McDonald's going to score this. It's body punching from Johnson against the jab and the occasional heavy right hand of Beard. This is one good scrap, but I wouldn't mind seeing this one again. Nice left hook to body. Counter punching right on the left hook afterwards. But he does leave his chin hanging out a bit when he comes in with those body shots. He certainly does. Well, it's a chance you've got to take. And uh, he was cut earlier on, so he had to be aggressive. Probably not his normal style. And uh, he had to take the chance to hit to the body and, and uh, connect with Bird and try to end the fight. Well, I tell you, not so very long ago, this fight would have earned a few bobbin nobbins. The coins on the nose would have come showering into the ring after this one. And a very nice fearful, fearful, man. 
That's a good diplomatic draw. That's one that we, I'm sure, will see again at some stage. It would have been a shame if either boy had lost that one, perhaps, yeah, Barry. Well done, referee. That was a very, very diplomatic and gentle. Linda Spade. And ladies and gentlemen, referee Marcus McDonnell has scored the contest 59 points each. The boxers have boxed to draw your appreciation for both boxers, ladies and gentlemen. Neil Johnson and Ricky Beer. A great contest. Fight, that one. Well done, both boys. And let's hope that Barry Earn might give us a return. Special some congratulations stage. to Young Neil Johnson so then, for making his debut. We're going to take a another short break. This evening. And when we come back, we'll be seeing the main event of the evening. Ten rounds, heavyweight contest, Hardy against you. Aussie Ocasio. <laughs> Sound as little helpers, but in addition to us looking silly, you're going to see the, some boxing that is far from silly tonight, that I do guarantee you. We start off with a flyweight bout of six three-minute rounds against the little scouser, Dave McNally, against Neil Johnston. There we are, what a handsome bunch of men we are. <laughs> My goodness, did you ever see anything like it in your life? The big one, of course, Carl Crook, just 35 days after becoming a dual champion. He defends those two crowns against Piper Honeywood. In about, oh, I don't know, about an hour's time, but let's see the flyweights in action first. Here's Dave McNally getting into the ring. He's ranked eight by Boxing Weekly. Having his fifth fight tonight, you can see he's unbeaten so far. And a promising little lad, this Jimmy. Yeah, very much so. You know, this boy is um, one of the bright young prospects that uh, fortunate to have on screen sport. Justice. That was Neil Johnson, of course, and this is Dave McNally. That's Dave McNally. There we go, that's better. You've seen it once, you can see it again now. But despite the fact that we've seen the caption twice, nothing all the, all the fact, Jimmy, that uh, he is a youngster with a very bright future, this boy. Yeah, he's very, very good prospect. I mean, I'm looking forward to this contest in particular because I know Johnson's very, very confident in himself. He's had a very good ground in the amateur game and he's very confident of winning tonight, so it should be interesting. Well, right, Alan Hughes now is going to be uh, quadrilingual. Get out of that. TV sport in France, as you are, as you know, and to screen sport in the United Kingdom, a very, very Christmas to you all. Well done, Alan. All your very well done. evening are appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Ladies and gentlemen, the first contest is a flyweight contest at eight stone, two pounds, over six three-minute rounds. Introducing, in the red corner, with the white shorts, from Middlesbrough, Neil Johnson. Well, I'll tell you what his record is. He's had one fight, and he drew it. That was against Ricky Beard on the 5th of October in Basildon. And you might remember we saw it. From Liverpool, Dave McNally. After being weighed at 12 o'clock today, a Johnson scale at 8 stone 1 pounds, McNally 8 stone 2 pounds. Your referee for this opening contest is Brian Hogg of Southport, and your timekeeper, Terry Barnum of Pontypridd. Nice little wink there from Dave McNally to Neil Johnston. Had a very good amateur career, Dave McNally. It's a shame that in, uh, in, John, in John Lyon, Jimmy, there were two uh, outstanding lighter boys, and uh, it was invariably Dave McNally that missed out. Yeah, you know, no, nothing to worry about losing out to a fighter of the talent and calibre of John Lyon. One of the great amateurs the amateur circuit over the last decade. So this is a six-round bout. 
three minutes each round. Actually, we, um, we saw Dave McNally. Coincidentally, that was in Basildon too, his last bout, back in uh, the middle of June. He'd left up there. It was indeed. Fought Robbie Regan, the Welsh boy. That was a, a very good draw over six rounds. And after that fight, John Morris, the secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, took them both aside and said, well, you know, the next time you meet, could be for the British title. And uh, if somebody like John Morris, who uh, knows his boxing, says that, well, you never know what might come about. We shall see. Right now, though, he's got to dispose of Neil Johnston. Good combination, right off cut, left up from McNally there. Fortunately for Johnston, it was just slightly off the target. Break! Midway through the first. Marginally the cleaner punching so far, coming from McNally in the blue. Yeah, he's shaded the opening, got the opening round in what has basically been a feeling out round. Yes. But he did get tagged once and um, his chin stood up to it. By the way he plants his feet, looks very solid, McNally. Yeah, I'm sure he's um, been well coached by an old amateur foe of mine, amateur friend, John Farrell there from Liverpool. Right, the opening round for both boys starting to loosen up there and let the punches fly a little bit more. Just seems a little bit crisper at this stage of the opening round, McNally. Yes, I'd agree with that, Jim. Just getting off the split second quicker. Very composed. And nevertheless, Johnston, as the bell goes, trying to get that jab working. And as Jimmy said, a good, clean, crisp, entertaining opening round. Now, another of Santa's little helpers gets in the ring. That's one of Santa's, Santa's favourite little helpers. Even though it's early in the night, she's probably got the best cheer in the night <laughs> now and later. <laughs> Here's Neil Johnston. And he's coming into shot there, Freddie King. I'm sure Freddie's trying to put over his knowledgeable head and, and, and get young Johnson to start firing on all cylinders and not let McNally gain too much confidence in the early going. Well, you don't need me to tell you what great fighters the city of Liverpool has produced over the years, from the Contes and the Rudkins back down to El Tarleton. A city with a wonderful fighting tradition. Most recently, of course, Paul Hodkinson, Coco. We wish him well in 91. World title. Second round then. McNally in the blue. And Johnston in the white. And first round for the Liverpool boy. You know, Johnston clipped McNally, as we were saying, early in the fight with a left hook, and since that good shot, he's relied on that shot over and over again. He's been trying to come out of a roll and land a left hook. McNally's quite wise to it by now. Very um, work. Break! Right hand from Johnson that time. Caught McNally bang on. That's the second time he's got through with a right. And McNally taking them without undue effort, or so it seems from this side of the ropes at any rate. Yeah, that was the best shot of the fight so far for me. Bang on. Good right hand. A 
both boys begin to let punches flow now. Feeling that process is over. Both boys let punches go with absolutely full venom around them. And already in the second round, Johnston's face, a healthy shade of pink. Gives you some testament as to the, uh, the power behind McNally's punches. So for two kids so early in their careers, um, good buying and test for them. They're both quality performers and both young, good quality shots. Well, Britain's always had a great tradition of flyweights, and uh, with youngsters like these coming on, that tradition looks set to continue. A bit vulnerable, but now they do these sort of big swinging hooks that Johnson throws from time to time. He's, he's, he's winged in a couple, and they both got through. Johnson seems to have the, have the advantage in hand speed. He really does. He's got tremendous hand speed. I know they're only flyweights, but he seems to be getting off with the combinations and just moving off before McNally can get off. You can't in any way criticise the way that right. Johnston's fighting. He's doing everything right so far. He, he's, he's, he's fighting at a, at a good pace. He's getting behind the jab and doing absolutely nothing wrong at all. That's right, and that left hand's getting to work, work nicely for him now. Now McNally looks, as we were saying earlier, he looks set, gets set for his punches, but he's shipping one or two good shots from Johnson. Well, for the, the better part of this fight, McNally's just planted himself in the middle of the ring. And Johnson, Johnson. Johnson's buzzed around about a sort of Red Indian raiding party, and I wouldn't disagree with that judgment at all, Jim. I, I reckon Johnson might have shaded that one. Yeah, he... Um, on work rate. I was very impressed with him there. He got through early in the round with a good right hand. He relied on the shot once or twice after that, obviously getting very ambitious with it. But he also got home with one or two solid good left jabs, so a very good round for Johnson, and McNally, McNally now needs to find an answer to Johnson's strategy. Now let's take a look at that punch. There we there go. That the was the right that Jimmy was telling you about. But um, but now his legs stayed steady. Well, it's even Stevens all coming out for the third, so there's everything to go for. Both boys listening to their corners intensely, looking for wordly advice, which hopefully can find a result and a strategy to win this contest. Certainly, deeply thought out. Three. Each boy think, thinking economically about every move he throws. Well, in that last round, McNally, to an extent, surrendered the advantage he'd gained in the first. And he was just hustled out of it. No other word for it by Johnson, who's, uh, who's fighting well. I thought right. he was a, just a wee bit unlucky, Johnson, to um, not to be given the nod against Ricky Beard in his uh, professional debut. I thought he, he might have just nicked it, but it was not to be. Johnson seems to have got a feel for the fight now. He looks very... Good on his feet, smart side to side. And McNally looks a little bit a little bit too leaden to the cows, a little bit too one pace for the flyweight pace that Johnson's setting. Let's get a little bit more bounce into his work. But McNally certainly looks a heavier puncher, Dave. Well, one of his... Uh wins one of his three wins has been uh, has been inside the distance um obviously too early yet to say whether johnson's got any real sort of dig on him but looking at his physique wouldn't have thought so the manali going after johnson in this third session much more noticeably than he did in the second. This is as competitive a fight as you could wish to see. Both boys thinking and 100% concentration on both sides. A little smear of blood now underneath McNally's nose. Both boys are landing quality punches in this fight. Absolutely. Johnson's got a guard against his over-eagerness. Yes, he's... Um, he got clipped a couple of times with good counters then as he came in. Needs to keep his act together and keep boxing smart. Getting off with the shots, it wouldn't be success. Break. Back. 
You know, Johnson's game plan to me now seems he's drawing McNally in, keeping both hands on, bobbing and weaving under the shots and coming up with good class counters of his own. Seems a good strategy which to work from. Here we go again. I'm not altogether sure, but I think I'm right in saying that in the opening fight of, of his pro career, it was 6-2 um, rounds by Johnson. He, he's never gone 6-3s as a pro before. Obviously, he'll have three threes in the amateur days, but um, might test out his stamina. Better round for McNally, that one. It's certainly a nip and tuck type of contest with um, both boys not making that many mistakes to be countered. And um, both boys are having to work very, very hard to set the other, the other guy up for whatever combination of shots they're intending to land. Both boys are really having to think this one out. So midway through the bout. And I've got McNally in front by a whisker, Jim. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult one to score. It's uh, another nip and tuck round and not really that much in it on, on either department, but someone needs to move into the driving seat very shortly and take, the, take this one by the scruff of the neck. Who it's going to be, I don't know. But no other fight I give you much away. Great. If it comes to a, a test of sheer strength, I reckon McNally might just possibly have the advantage there. Yeah, he looks a stronger guy physically. Johnston trying to... Out of the two contestants. Notice, you probably noticed that. Working to the body, trying to slow him down a bit. He's very consummate and paces the fight nicely, doesn't go crazy, just tucks up nicely, does, does the basics but does them very well. Yes, as you, uh, as you said a little earlier, Jim, he's a, he a little bit one pace, he's a little bit sort of in and out, whereas you can, you can see Johnston going clockwise, Andy clockwise and getting through with another good right-hander right on the button. Johnston seems to have maintained a lot of his amateur status with him. He's, Bouncy and side to side, as you said, and but it's a very good pace and begin to double up on shots now. That's a nice move there, double left up right cut. Break. Well he's landed during the course of the fight so far. Some really solid rights on McNally's chin that uh, Liverpool boy hasn't wilted yet. That's a good jab from McNally. He doesn't tend to use that shot as much as he should. But once again, a better round for Johnson. It's real nip and tuck. Yeah, it's been, been one of them fights when you could sort of make a case for both fires. Well, at this stage, I wouldn't like to separate them. Now, maybe just a pin of frustration creeping into McNally. They're big. Arcing left, missed by a mile. He seems to be doing the smart things, Johnson. He's going up and down through the gears. He's not leading to the cams. He's not one pace. He's varying it, varying his attack to the body with good right hands and like now that. Now he's starting to hurt McNally a little bit. Yes, this is um, a great round from Johnson so far. Quality stuff, moving side to side and landing good clean shots. Another good right hand left. And he is starting to get through now. And right. maybe just one or two little warning signals for McNally. McNally seems very tired at this stage of the fight. Well, very, very even. We're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back for the start of the fifth. <laughs> and that good right uppercut from Johnston in the fourth. And he got he, he really cut, cut loose at the end of that round. And uh, although McNally had taken some good shots beforehand, the ones that got through at the end of that last round really hurt him. Yeah, I remarked towards the end of the fourth round that McNally was showing signs that it 
was feeling the pace of the contest, even though he has paced out. And if he is, then I feel that it could be his undoing because Johnson, I know, is in tremendous shape. He's worked very, very hard for this contest. And uh, I'm sure he's going to finish strong down the home straight. It wouldn't be a major surprise if McNally dropped this one, but it would cause a few eyebrows to be raised, I'll tell you that. Oh. That was a good shot from McNally. Switched the left hook over. Short but quality shot. I was going to say short and sweet, but it probably weren't, sh weren't too sweet for Johnson. <laughs> Johnson's starting to trade with McNally now. I don't know whether that's a wise tactic. Chuck that on the gloves. Well, some good, good defensive work from Johnston in this round. He's taken one or two stinging shots on his guard. Like, that's, that's good boxing. I'd like to see McNally work more to the body against a slender-looking Johnson, but he's concentrated mainly on headshots. That's quite right, isn't he? He's thrown a body shot throughout yet, and there's still just leaking blood a little bit from McNally. It's become very readable. Great. I mean, readable for us on this side of the road, probably not for Johnson, because uh, he's certainly shipped one or two good shots from McNally. I tell you, this is a hell of a way to earn the money for the Christmas turkey, this one. It's a tough fight. A very tough fight. As competitive as you wish to see, it really is. <laughs> Nearly leaking blood from the nose now. Yeah, it's been troubling, troubling him really since the second. I'm sure the accuracy of Johnson's jabs hasn't helped. He's got one or two good jabs when he's gone behind the left hand. I think he's still looking for the big right hand that he nailed him with a round or two ago. He's probably if you come over, rely, rely on, on that particular shot in his arm ring. <laughs> with a round to go. <laughs> Can go either, I can't separate them on my card. I'm glad we're not refereeing. Because, um, you know, either guy is going to be a little bit disappointed with the final result. Well, we may see a diplomatic draw again. I don't know. It would be quite something for Neil Johnson to start his pro career with two draws in his first two fights. It would set some sort of record. <laughs> now, who do you want to see? Freddie King or that? All of those in favour? Right. The best stocking filler of 1990 so far. The exciting thing for everybody looking at him in this particular fight is, this, is the simple fact that we thought we'd go for it. We're in for a very exciting last round. Both boys wishing to stamp their authority and sway the referee's judgment and get the nod. Well, you've got three possible outcomes at the end of this. And the nod for either boy or a draw. Might just come down to sheer will to win. What a good fight this has been. Quality stuff. There's a good one, two from Johnson. Bang on, very early in the round. Don't want to overdo the old Christmas cracker cliche, but this really has been a, a sparkling little fight. Oh, yes. Good left what a good left. Alley. Johnson took that well. A good shot. Could the superior strength tell in now? Shook him up there. I tell you, both boys are shipping a lot of stick in this last round. Now he shook him up a little bit. Caught him with a right hand and a left hook. The better thing for Johnson to do is go back on his bike, use his feet, stick to his better class boxing. A good start of the round by the Liverpool boy. Dave McNally in the blue. Good round for McNally so far. 
getting through with some good solid shots to the other Johnson. Well, he's been he's been throwing the left hooks throughout the bout, and it's really towards the end of last round and this one that they've got through. Because in, in previous rounds, Johnson's defensive work was terrific, taking a lot of them on the gloves. But don't get the idea the Middlesbrough boy is out of it because he's all, he's landing some heavy work as well. I said it'd be able to go for in the last round. I think I've improved right because both boys have shipped some solid shots. Another fight fighter looking to hide. They know it's very close and they're both trying to sway the referee's decision. But Nanny looks physically the stronger man at this stage of the fight. Right. We're inside the last minute. And <laughs> good up from Johnson that time. Oh, it's good. Good quality right. shot. Switch that in. Close quarters there. This is a nobbins fight. Both boys know they've had to work hard to earn their capers tonight. Both took good shots and landed good shots. And uh, a cracking little fight. Right. Well, both boys have proved they can throw shots. They've proved they can take shots. I wonder, I wonder which one. I'm wondering whether Johnson's better box. He may just sway the verdict for him. You know, it's been a strong last round from McNally. I wouldn't. Any, any, uh, any decision. I wouldn't argue with Jim. I don't think the fighters will either. A stern warning for McNally. What a good fight. Manali. manali has got the nod. Well, I gave it to him by half a point. I made him win that last round, and I had them dead level going into that last round. It's fun, we're well pleased with that. That's a good win, because in Johnson, he's beat a very good prospect in David. Good performance. What a cracking little fight. The crowd appreciate it. Everyone else, because that was a cracker. Well, let's see what the score was. Now he had to work to preserve his unbeaten record, but Neil Johnston must not feel too downhearted. Yeah, that half point. That was the it was the last round that did it. As I was saying, Neil Johnston should not feel too disheartened. He put up a cracking little performance, and his day will come. Be sure of that. Well, this is the first bout that we have lined up for you. Neil Johnston of Middlesbrough against Eric George of Swansea. It's a flyweight contest over six two-minute rounds. Well, here comes Eric George, and we've seen him once or twice before on Pro Box. Can you hear me, Dave? Well, Jimmy, I guess these uh, dinner boxing shows, you must have fought on one or two of them in your time. Yeah, more than one or two, Dave. I've fought on quite a few, and um, that's a different experience. It's not your sort of general boxing panel you get the busiest, the busiest man type, and um, it's a different attitude which you've got to learn to adjust to. Harry George, rank number 10 in the UK, 22 years of age. There's Mike Goodall giving him a little drink. Mike Goodall, I've got to tell you, he's been working like a slave today, putting up the ring, acting as a second. It's a good job Alan Hughes is here to act as MC, or as Mike could be doing that as well. of Middlesbrough's Neil Johnston. Still awaiting his first professional win. And here he comes. We last saw him just before Christmas up in Preston. Remember when Carl Crook beat Ian Honeywood? Well, on the same bill, 
Neil Johnston fought Dave McNally, lost on points over six rounds. I remember that was a stormy fight. So in comes Neil Johnston. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome Here's to the news. sumptuous uh, Grunda Hills Hotel. And as always, a very special welcome goes to all our viewers on Screen Sport in the United Kingdom, Sport Canal in Germany, Sportnet in Holland and Belgium, and TV Sport in France. To a splendid evening of professional boxing promoted by Tally Hearns Matchroom and sponsored by Ben Sherman. All your officials for this evening are appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. The opening contest is a flyweight contest over six two-minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner with the red shorts from Wales, Eric George. Stone, one and a half pounds. Your referee for the opening contest so, two and a half pounds and your in Eric George's right. favour. And if the two boxers are familiar, so should the third man in the ring. Jimmy's brother, Marcus. I wonder whether you'd recognise him, Dave. Uh, how could I not? He's come the most famous referee on screen sport. <laughs> I reckon he is. So we're scheduled for six twos. This is the first. Johnston in the black and George in the red of Wales. thing about watching flyways is the speed they fight at, you know, tremendous, everything's done so quickly, sharp little fighters, needs to keep out the tradition. Well, the flyweight division in Great Britain enjoying something of a resurgence at the moment. I, I think there's probably more active flyweights at the moment than there have been for the past 10, 15 years. Now, these two boys are sort of middle of the division, if you like, but um, they're good little kids for all that. Yeah, it's been a re-emerging division over the last couple of years, and it's good to see plenty of boys at the weights up and get plenty of work. One time I remember there was about two or three rating in Great Britain, not going back that long ago. Well, if you're, uh, if you're a boxing fan whose memory goes back long enough, you remember Charlie Magri was actually given a Lonsdale belt after only two successful title fights because there weren't enough good flyweights around a challenge for the British title, and that has changed in a big, big way now. He's a little bit, he's a little bit special, Charlie Magri. Former world champions, we know. Remember, these are two minute rounds. Right! Now sprint right. distance. Don't wrestle, George, don't wrestle. Being flyweight, sprint's the appropriate word. Yeah, that's very, very true, Jim. It's a nice work from George in this opening round. Yeah, he showed some nice little moves. Probably just did this round with a cleaner shot. He's got through one or two good right hands as well, which Johnson needs to get wise to. First round of our cards to Eric George. And this is Neil Johnston's corner. Having fight number three tonight. Only been a pro since last October, when he drew his opener with Ricky Beard in Basildon. Then we saw Ricky Beard down the York Hall on our last show. And then he met Dave McNally on that pre-Christmas show up in Preston, when uh, he lost on points over six rounds. And Eric George. Earlier in the year, we saw him in Brentwood when he fought Tim Yates and uh, was stopped in six. I don't think the trainers would be able to turn to step the world right up because the pace was absolutely electric from the opening round.
down to. Johnson. Oh, a good left from George. And that had Johnson back on his heels. That bit of action took the words out of my mouth. I was just going to say, Neil Johnson can't just rush in against this guy. This guy's a sharp little counter puncher. Johnson's chipped one or two good shots on the chin there. Well, George has just won one out of six. He's, uh, he's yet to stop anybody. That left but, uh, looks a dangerous weapon that George's got in his arm. That was a good shot. It was indeed. Throws it viciously. And Johnson's taking it flush on the chin. Now, everything David George is doing is working. Whether he swings and, and gets lucky, he seems to land. And it'd be wise for Johnson to try and change the game plan and sort something else out because he's chipping one or two shots that he should avoid. And of course, when you try things and they come off, you get confident. And when you get confident, you try more things. And when they come off, well, you end up sky high. And it's all going right for Eric George at the moment. Yeah, he's boxing smart. He's just doing everything. <laughs> Have a good round for George. And we're back with George now. And I guess, really, Jim, that's sort of boxing in a nutshell, isn't it? There are some times when anything you do in the ring comes off, and there are other times you'll do exactly the same things, and you couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo. I'll tell you, there's nothing more more right. You can be in the ring some nights and feel like a novice when you really, you know, you're a class fire. And Neil Johnson's. A real sharp fight. I've seen him in the gym sparring and working, and he's got plenty of class, but he's taking it and portraying it in the ring, and that's what he's got to do tonight. I'd like to see him try and change things, as I said earlier in the commentating, and one of the things I'd like to see him do is become the counter-puncher, do a little bit of kid kidology, a little bit of cut brain, and you can see him here leaning in, but getting nailed with the left hook there, and he's in a little bit of trouble. But really, he set out for himself and made a basic mistake. I've seen introduce a little bit of fainting into his work here, Dave, and try and draw the lead from the strong Welsh boy and then throw the counters, rather than try and make the fight all the time, because it's suiting George when he does that. And of course, with this sort of fight, if you get behind early on, it, it's so hard to get back in. And to give Johnson his credit, he's, he's trying to stick with his game plan, but um, he's just getting constantly beaten to the punch by, uh, by Eric George. Yeah, he just seemed that yard in front. That's right. And as the rounds are going by, of course, George is growing in confidence and making life even more difficult. Now cut Neil Johnson. Left eye. Left eye. It's all going very wrong for him tonight. Yeah, of course, the stimulation that's going to give George words can't describe. It's a shot of adrenaline, just seeing the sight of blood. Come back with two good shots to his own as I spoke. This is a real gruelling encounter. at the moment but I stress at the moment because uh, it's right in the corner of the eye and a couple of a couple of shots on target and then I could go I'm sure Johnson is glad to be end of that round it's his best round of the fight so far it's a shame he got cut because that's the kind of thing that could swing it back round his way boxing intelligently smartly 
and trying to score shots and nip away rather than stay there trading. The stronger looking George. I'm sure they're going to um, work for as long as possible and getting that cut under control. And everything hunky dory in the Eric George corner at the moment. A little bit of a little bit of shadowing around his left eye, underneath the left eye, but uh, nothing to get alarmed about from his viewpoint. And that may be that right hand was how the cut was caused, with Johnson in a corner, and I think he came out of that clinch with that damage to his left eye. Well, the, the corner done a good job, round four, into the home stretch. And Marcus McDonald didn't even look at that cut during the break, so uh, not too bad, but uh, can't afford to get too much worse. No, and he can't afford, can't afford to get sloppy defensively either, you know. He's, when he does lunge in, that's when he gets nailed. Well, it's a case of gritting your teeth and getting stuck in at the moment. Don't hold in it. Don't hold in it. And that perhaps was really how the cut was caused. He's having to take a couple to land a couple. Oh. But he lands a couple now, a perfect response. Left hook. Down goes George. That was a cracking left hook. Up at eight. Well, now we've got a fight on our hands. And George, very, very shaky. Left eye of Eric George doesn't look too good now. He wants to try and hold on to Johnson and try and let the cobwebs come out of his head because he's really is shaken. Shot, one good shot would finish this from Johnson. He's on his last legs at the moment, but Johnson's getting excited and trying to land and without really setting him up. Well, when your first pro victory is beckoning you, George looks so, so groggy at the moment. Full credit to him, though. He's cutting back of a couple of shots in his own. And trying to take the sting out of Johnson, even now. Tremendous guts. This is one good little scrap as a show opener. That's what an instinct that is. Once again, Johnston's left eye starting to trickle blood. I tell you what, Dave, Eric George has shown the gut to the champion there. He was out on his feet. He's still a little bit wonky, Jim. He's still in desperate trouble. I'd like to see him just hold on and let his head clear. Now that is an advantage of a two-minute round. Absolutely. Now, on the experience point of view, you just see a little bit of inexperience in Johnson's behalf there. He rushed in got close and got tangled rather than set the fellow up and look for one big bomb because one big bomb would have done it just one accurate shot on the, on the bottom and it would have been like that let's take another look at that knockdown and it was a, a sweeter left hook as you will ever see it's missed with a big right hand and as they teach you in the gym come back with a left hook and bang bang on target he fell heavily but he's George just absolutely down. square when that landed Fabulous. there's the right hand he missed with and here it goes bingo and Eric George did ever so well to get up from that, I tell you. Right, it's anybody's fight now. Well, I'll tell you what, boxing's one of them sports. You, you can never sort of get an odds-on favourite after one or two rounds because um, they tend to always, always jump the fences in these sort of races. And and tremendous battle. I tell you, Johnston came out of his corner then, like he was spring-loaded. Yeah, he'd be buzzing there. He'd be really, really excited with the prospect of pulling off his first professional victory. And let's not forget, though, that George caught Johnston in the second with a good left hook, and that wobbled him. So there's a lot of action left in this contest, right, to tell you. Right back, right back. Well, Dave, you predicted before the contest, would it be a cracker, and it's lived up to their expectations. I just wonder if, if George is still a little bit shaky, because that was a big left hook, he fell heavily. And boxing smart, he's moving around, being intelligent. Not trying to get involved in anything crazy. Well, he's getting the jab poking out, and I'm sure he's following his corner's instructions for the letter right now. And coming back with good shots, that was a good right hand he caught Johnson with on the top of the head. Yeah, the left eye is, uh, once again, sending blood trickling down Johnston's left cheek.
pretty cute ground from Eric George. He's not mixing it. Look, he's too intelligent. They're winning the round. Exactly, exactly. Showing good foot movement side to side. Not getting involved in anything. Crossfire. Boxing intelligent and, in my opinion, he's best round of the fight. Right, right back. Because, you know, boxing's yard self defence, hit and not be hit, and he's doing that to a T. Merrick George. I'm sure his corner would be well pleased with that. Well, if his corner told him to do just that, they could not have wished their instructions to be carried out more explicitly. The cheers you can hear off camera, incidentally, for the girl carrying the ring card who's in, uh, shall we say, imminent danger of falling out of a black costume that she's wearing. But you want to watch the boxing, don't you? You don't want to see that. <laughs> or maybe you do want to see that. There you go. <laughs> Jim, you're a married man. Keep your eyes off that. Back to the boxing. And the last round instructions for Neil Johnson, who can still lick this. It can go either way. I think he needs a good round, though, David. Hello, Is it? And, last round. and I think Mr George is going to try and stay intelligent after his success in the fifth round. What a fabulous opening contest. Terrific. If the others are as good as this, we're due for a hell of an evening. Here the exactly. Field. That left up you were talking about earlier, Johnson, got now coming in by George. These two might be flyweights in weight. They don't pants like flyweights. And Johnston going looking for his man. But George, George is fighting a good fight. Very smart. And when you think of that, not Fanny suffered, it looked like it could have been end of story, but as you said, the two minute round done a favour in, in that instance. Well, yes, had it been a three minute round, I really don't think he could have come through it, because it happened early in the round that night, Dan, but uh, his head cleared, he hung on, more by good luck than good judgement, but he got through it. And this last round's a stormer too. Got caught with a cluster of shots there. You never know, this Did could George. be another draw. The eye's looking a bit messy now. You won't be worried about that now, I'm sure. No, that's Two in his all to pull out, pull out the winning he so badly needs on his, on his record. Oh, he's looking at the eye. Oh, this is sad. Can't be much left on the round, actually, Dave. No, seconds. Let him, oh, come on, let him go on. I'd like to see him give him the benefit of the doubt. And, and he is. Finish his comments. Well done, Marcus. Right hand left up. Right Two good shots there from Johnson. There it is again. The now, Johnston. That right hand left up combination looks absolutely fabulous when he throws it. And that eye is looking really bad now. Good job, it's the last round. Precisely. Last ten. In fact, less than that. Oh, it is a draw. Tremendous <laughs> result. Good result. The second draw of Neil Johnson's career. He's now had two draws in three fights. And the second draw of Eric George's, and I wouldn't quibble with that at all. That was a cracking little bout. I'll tell you what, Dave, I've ever been pleased to see a contest called a draw, and that is it, because no other fighter really did deserve to lose. No, I couldn't agree with you more, Jim. That was an absolutely cracking little contest. I'll vouch for that. Brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Marcus McDonald has scored the contest 58 and a half points to each boxer. They have boxed a draw. Ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation for both these young boxers. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. I've got a feeling we'll be seeing them again on the Barry Hearn match from Bill before too long. That would be a natural return. So, a lovely little fight to start off with. And, uh, well, we expect better things for the second bout. And That's a